the Smoky CNC Woodworks. I'm Brian and today I'm going to try to answer some questions. I've been getting a lot of questions about three things. As you saw in the title, speeds, feeds, and I've got several questions over zeroing again. I've done a video in the past over zeroing but I didn't, clearly didn't point out everything I needed to. So I'm going to try to hit all these things and I don't know why I put them in those order because I'm actually going to go through them backwards. Okay, as you can see, I'm behind the machine here. This is where I'm usually standing whenever everything's cutting. And uh, you can see, I'll zoom in there. You can see my X right there. So what I'm going to do is maneuver this, maneuver the head of the spindle over to it. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, the computer side of it here in a second too. Okay, so I've maneuvered it down and it's just touching the top of the material. Okay, so as you can see, this is Mach 3. I'll go ahead and zoom it out so you can see all of it here. And this is right behind the machine. So what I'm looking at when I'm zeroing it is these three things here. Here's your X, Y, Z, and the number four is if you have a fourth axis. So I don't ever use it. So as you can see right here, you saw me moving the spindle while ago. So here we go, I'm gonna go back. And I'm going to take it to the right spot, take it back down to the X, okay we're back zeroed again. So right here you can see all these numbers. So what I do now is go up here and click on each one and make it zero, zero, zero. That's what we mean by zeroing the machine. That means the machine is picking up the spindle and thinks that is the spot it's supposed to start. That is the starting point. So then I usually just raise it up a couple inches and I fire up the spindle and take off. Okay, now although I don't believe that particular thing is exactly what everybody was having trouble with, the part I didn't cover was this. Whenever you change bits, so I'm going to change from a, a, a V-bit to a straight bit like a in mill or a ball nose, you have to re-zero after you change the bits. And a couple of the emails I've gotten was, boy, it messed up their deal because the zero was off apparently. Well, if you didn't go back and zero again after you change bits, yeah, I agree, it probably was. Okay, so as you can see right here, I've changed bits out. You can see it sticking out right there. And it's just a little in mill bit that I put on there. And so what I need to do is make it hit that same X that's right down below it. So now I'm going to be lined up left and right because my X and Y are still going to stay the same. The only thing I'm changing is my Z, the depth it goes. So what I would do is just lower it down, touch the X, and zero Z. So right back over, right back over here on the same screen, all I'm doing is lowering this down. You can see my Z moving. And I'm going to lower it down until it touches the top of the material. And you can see it's 0.16 different than what the V-bit was. So I'll just hit zero. So again, now this is zeroed all over. It's in exactly the right spot it should be. And we can take off. So while we're on zeroing, I'm going to address another problem that I got asked about. So say you've already done your V-bit. I mean, I'm sure you all remember this when I cut this a long time ago. And you're trying to zero your end mill, but it comes down in one of the grooves that's already been cut, or up here somewhere. It's pretty simple. Okay, so as you can see, the end mill there is right over one of the grooves that's already been cut. So the way we zero the end mill when it's hang hanging over a valley or a cut that's already been made, you just maneuver it over to an area that is still flat. And then you go down and go just to the surface and zero only the Z. Only the Z. You don't have to have the... When you start this up and get to running, when you start this up and get to running, you don't have to have the spindle 
in exactly zero position. When you start it and hit go on the program, it will take it and to zero so it knows where to start from and then go. You don't have to be exact. I try to keep it close to it when I start them because I don't want it running all around and wasting time. So just simply move over a little bit, go down, touch a smooth surface, and just zero the Z only. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to address is the speeds and feeds. And what I generally get asked is, do I have a particular speed and feed that I like to run on? And do I do most things at that particular speed? Well, the answer is yes. I do. I have one, a particular area that I stay in, and I really don't delve outside of it too much. I have occasionally, but so... What that means is, is your speed is the speed that your spindle is sitting there spinning around. And so I run mine at 16,000 RPMs almost all the time. Just simply because it, was a, it seemed to cut good on most things, and I've never really had trouble with it. And I mean, I can already feel the backlash I'm going to get from this from experts because they change that stuff right and left all the time. Well, you know what? I don't, and it works. So I'm just probably going to leave it alone for right now. And if it starts causing issues, I'll change later. But uh, so that's your speed. Your feed is how fast that thing's traveling when it's sitting there cutting. And I don't know if y'all have ever noticed, mine, I generally run mine fairly slow. I can actually speed it up quite a bit and it would really move. And I've cut stuff at 100% speed. Man, it's just scary. I mean, if something went wrong, I couldn't react fast enough to stop the machine. So I like to slow it down. I've also found that if I will. I've got my certain settings I do for different woods. So if I'm doing oak, I will run it at 16,000 RPM and I'll run it at 70% speed. So instead of being 100%, I run it at 70%. Sometimes 60% if it's just I'm having trouble with a particular piece of wood. So like if I'm doing pine or cedar, it's probably up there around 80 to 90%. It's a softer wood, it cuts faster. And a lot easier and so I have no trouble with running it faster and a lot of times if you're running the machine slower on your speed and run it at 16,000 rpm say I ran it at 50% speed and was cutting pine I would burn the pine at that speed the the bit was going so fast it would just burn the wood so yes I do adjust that on Mach 3 I'm about to show you how I do that uh, the thing that I'm sure I'm gonna get questions about is whenever you show bits in your Vectric software and you're choosing what business it is, it asks you the speed and the feed rate. I leave the feed rate alone in there and I leave the speed alone in there simply because if you'll recall whenever I did my build uh, videos, my spindle is not directly connected to my breakout board. In other words, I can't control my spindle through Mach 3. I, mean, I can't just control the speed of it. I can control where it goes, but I can't control the speed of it. And that's simply because my breakout board's not big enough to accept it. If I got ordered a new, bigger break, breakout board, blah, 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 too many Bs there. If I'd ordered me a bigger breakout board and had more ports, I could actually tie the spindle in and it, I could control the speed from the computer screen. And that would be nice, I agree. But I'm much one of these guys that I've got it working, it's working good. Why mess with it? I mean, if I tweak it a little bit, I may have this thing all messed up, who knows? So I'm just leaving it where it's at till now, for now until either I run into problems or I just have the desire to change it up. So over here at Mach, Mach 3, the, uh, the home screen that it starts you out on, and I'll, I'll pull back here so you can kind of get an idea of what it is. I mean, it, it shows you everything. This is where I upload programs. This is where I start. I can hold, I can stop. Uh, you can put in the tool information here or it will recognize the tool information from your program. Feed rate is what we're after and spindle speed. That right there is what I do not use because I simply don't have it hooked into my computer or into my, the spindle's not hooked into my computer directly. So right here, the feed rate. So I'll zoom in there and you can see these arrows here up and down. Right now, it's set at 100%. And you can also see it right here. So whenever I start, and I'm doing oak, for say, we'll say, I just bounce that thing down. Now you can see it says 70%. And that's the speed I run it. 
and it does really well on oak and it's very simple and if I ever do start having any trouble on oak I might slow it down to 60. <coughs> Rare that that happens but occasionally it does and usually it's an indicator that I have a, a dull bit if I'm running into problems at that speed. So and like I said you know pine and cedar I'll run at 80 to 90 percent and really has saved me a lot of headache and worked really well for me. So that's speeds, feeds, and just some more information on zeroing. Uh, that's about all I'm going to go into today. The other things I do have coming up, I do have several other things I've got programmed. Some of them are, we'll just say I have another retirement plaque. Uh, I've got a couple of businesses, and when I get to it, I've got one business that's got a big name behind it. It's going to be pretty cool, too. So one of the other things I've talked about uh, before is showing some of the other woodwork I do outside of the CNC. And I'm actually going to do a video here before long because <clears throat> you're not going to recognize part of my shop anymore. I've been slow to get a video out this week, but I've been working on building me new benches. I've already built eight foot of eight foot more bench down one wall. I'm fixing to put eight foot more. I'm going to show you how I do that on one of the upcoming videos. Just be watching for it. So guys, that's going to be it for today. Uh, thank you all for coming over and watching. If you all haven't done so yet, please subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.